Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you want to, I appreciate a comment to help the algorithm. It helps me out a lot, and I truly appreciate all of you. I hope that this video you find informative and interesting, and I hope it helps you with whatever you're going through. As always, take care and have fun. <sighs> Gentlemen, what is toxic masculinity? Does it exist? Is it real? Are there warning signs? If toxic masculinity does exist, does toxic femininity exist? These are all the questions I'm going to answer in this video. And I'm not going to use the mainstream ideology of what toxic masculinity is. I'm going to tell you exactly what it really is, that it does, how it does exist, how we can fight against it, and how we can do better as men. So stay tuned to find out what toxic masculinity really is. So let's discuss, does it exist? Yes. Yes, it does. Toxic masculinity is quite simply a toxic effect brought on by a masculine trait. That's all it is. Hyper-competitiveness, for example. When you are hyper-competitive, when you're competitive, that's a fantastic trait. That's a masculine trait, and that's a fantastic trait. To be competitive, to want to be the best, to push yourself to your absolute limit. That is fantastic to have. When you are hyper-competitive, however, when you have to win, when you are a sore loser, when you are incapable of losing, when you're one of those people who flips the board over because you lost at chess, when you're one of those people who has to cheat to win, when you're one of those people that has to have the edge over another person, you have to win or you don't have any validation, that's a toxic trait. Competition is fantastic. Competitiveness is fantastic. Hyper-competition, hyper-competitiveness is toxic. It's hell. This is a toxic trait. Toxic masculinity in its actual form, not what people tell you it is. People will tell you that everything masculine is now toxic. It's not how it is. But to say that it doesn't exist is also a lie. Any ideology stemming from masculinity can become toxic if taken to the extreme. Just like anything can be take, can become toxic, taken to the extreme. If you're a social drinker, you're perfectly fine. If you're an alcoholic, you have a problem. If you're taking pain medication because you have a pain, you need to kill a pain, you're perfectly fine. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what it's there for. If you're taking pain medication to get through the day, because otherwise you go through detox, you have a problem. Everything can become toxic if taken to the extreme. Video game addiction can become toxic if that's all you do. If you become completely obsessed with building up your online character and your actual character, your, your physical character, is just getting fatter, lazier, harder to breathe, but your online character is badass and got the best gear, there's a problem. So yes, toxic masculinity does exist. It just doesn't exist in the form that people tell you it is. What are some signs of toxic masculinity? Some of the signs of toxic masculinity are quite simply an over-exaggeration of abilities. Uh, a good example would be the, the trend that was going on for a while. That kid, the 16-year-old scrawny kid saying, I'm an alpha male and let somebody challenge me. And there's a bunch of duets of people saying, right... When you belittle somebody else's contribution because they don't put in enough effort or put in as much effort as you, that can be considered toxic. That can also be considered motivating. Like everything else, toxicity, what is toxic, is relative. Nothing is black and white. And anybody who tells you this is toxic, nine times out of ten is going to be wrong. Okay? This is the truth. Toxic is harmful. Harmful to you, harmful to others. If they just don't like you because you act a certain way, that's not toxicity. But if what you're doing is hurting you or hurting other people, that is. It is the simplest way to, sh to show it. So, does toxic femininity exist too? Absolutely. As I said, everything has a toxic component to it. 
a woman who mean girls is actually a perfect example of toxic femininity these are women I believe they were called the plastics I, I don't know my sister watched that crap and they were the, the popular girls and they decided who was popular and who wasn't based on insult and accusation and all this other crap that's toxic femininity Using your looks and your feminine wilds to manipulate people, that's toxic. That's not helping anybody, that's hurting people. That's toxic. It's that simple. Everything can become toxic if taken to the extreme. So anybody who tells you toxic femininity doesn't exist is an idiot. Anybody who tells you that toxic masculinity doesn't exist is an idiot. Anyone who tells you toxic video gaming doesn't exist is an idiot. Everything can be taken to a toxic level. It's unfortunate, but it's true. But not everything feminine is toxic and not everything masculine is toxic. Again, it is a nuanced system. It is not black and white. What can we do to overcome toxic traits? The simplest way to overcome toxic traits is self-reflection. Look at what you're doing to other people, how you treat other people, how you talk to other people, how you interact with other people. And look at yourself. Do you have any toxic traits? I know I do. I know I have toxic traits. I'm not going to lie about it. There are things that I need to work on on myself. I can be lazy. Sometimes I can be quick to anger. I don't like it. I try to. I try my best to avoid it. But sometimes certain things can just bang. And I'm ready to fight. It's not a good trait. So do you have any toxic traits? And odds are you probably do. Just work on them. How do you avoid toxic masculinity and toxic traits? Just work on them. Notice that you have them and work on them. It's that simple, guys. It's it's not a complicated concept at all. Self-reflection is the best thing that you can ever do, no matter what you're trying to do. You're trying to improve. You're trying to eliminate your toxic traits. You're trying to gain better traits. Self-reflection is always where you start. So how to avoid having these toxic traits is to look within yourself. Do you have them now? And what are your toxic traits? Because I guarantee you do. I guarantee you have some. Okay. I know that for a fact. So find out what they are and isolate. Do you view them as toxic? I'm very competitive, for example. I'm not hyper competitive. I don't have to win. I'm not a sore loser, but I'm very competitive. If I want something, I will compete and I will fight to my last breath to get it. So I'm very competitive. But if I don't get it, I don't freak out either. So that's not a toxic trait to me. To some, that might be a toxic trait. Again, it's nuanced. So yes, toxic masculinity does exist. Toxic femininity does exist. The best way to fight against it is self-reflection. And don't let somebody else tell you that a trait is toxic. Look within yourself and find out if you're hurting yourself or hurting others. Because a lot of times people tell you something is toxic, it's just because they don't like it. They think you should do something differently. And that's not how it works. You have every right to think, look at the world and do things the way that you want to do them. As long as you are not hurting yourself or others. So, I hope this helps clear it up. We may all may have different opinions on toxic traits. You may have a different opinion. I'm happy to hear it. Do you believe toxic masculinity doesn't exist? Do you believe toxic femininity doesn't exist? Please feel free to comment below. I'm happy to have this discussion. As always, take care and have fun.